Who has better food? What is your favorite? Number one favorite. What's going on everybody? Dave K here today. Want to take you through a Q&A. We are growing at an amazing rate and thank you all for being a part of it with me. No, we've got lots of new friends with us and with lots of new friends comes lots of new questions. So I've collected some of your questions on Instagram and some of those other platforms, Twitter and that sort of thing. And I've compiled them together. I'm gonna bring you this video here with some Q&A and maybe, who knows, in later videos, maybe we'll dive a little bit more into some of these topics, but wanted to give you a overview on a few of these questions and answers, let you know where we're at and give you some insights about me. Let's do it. First question is, which Universal Park do you prefer more and why? Diving a little bit into that one, if I had to pick one, it would be Islands of Adventure, but it really depends what you like. So the why, diving into a little bit of that why, is I like a lot of the rides over there and of course the theming. I'm a big fan of Marvel and the Marvel Universe. You know, I like video games and superhero movies and stuff like that. So Marvel's a big thing for me and that is over in Islands of Adventure. Not to mention some of my favorite rides in the Hagrid's area, and I feel like Harry Potter's got some of the best rides. I prefer the rides over in Islands of Adventure in Hagrid's area and Harry Potter World over the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in the other park in Universal Studios Florida and Diagon Alley. I personally prefer Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure and Forbidden Journey over Gringotts. So that's a few reasons why I prefer Islands of Adventure, but I think they're both great parks and it really depends what you like. If you like slower rides, I love the Minions ride, the Shrek ride, a couple of my favorites over in that other park as well. So you've got great options on either side, but if I had to pick one, it'd be Islands of Adventure. Another question was if I've done any of the scavenger hunts at Disney. Have I done any of those scavenger hunts? I have done a couple. I did the one of the big ones, the ones I remember really clearly, is the Halloween themed one at the Port Orleans French Quarter. Went on a little bit of that adventure way back then, a Halloween vlog. Back then you'll see a little bit of that pumpkin scavenger hunt, which was super cool at the French Quarter, but I haven't done too many. I know you're mentioning here there's a gondola one too, so I would love to check out that gondola one one of these days. Thanks for letting me know. I'll have to look into it. Definitely fun to be able to know about those scavenger hunts, but at the same time, there's so much to do, so much adventure to share. So we'll have to see if we can check that out one, check that one out and when we can make it happen. But thanks for letting me know. What are your top five places to eat at Disney? All right, it's a tough question, but I'm gonna run down the list for you here. And I wanna say number one is gonna be Yak and Yeti. Really love Yak and Yeti, has got some great options. Then I wanna say Ohana, Sanaa. Oh no, you know, probably Sanaa before Ohana for me. And then I wanna say um, Geyser Point's a great one. Really love Geyser Point. And then I'm gonna finish it off with Sci-Fi Diamond in the Hollywood Studios. So two of those in parks, the Animal Kingdom and the Hollywood Studios, and then three of those at resorts, Animal Kingdom Lodge, you've got yourself a Polynesian Resort, and of course the Wilderness Lodge Resort. So a variety of options there, but those are a few of my favorite restaurants, and you may or may not know what my favorite food items are at those restaurants, and if you have questions on that, let me know as well. But I think you've seen a lot of the vlogs where I've eaten at pretty much all those places and shown you my favorites. Let me know. And another question here is, have I played Sorcerers of the Magic Kingdom? We wanted to know if it's worthwhile, what that's like. I have played it. It's been a very, very long time. I played it close to when it came out so many years ago. It is a fun game. It's a card game. You kind of collect your set and try to beat these different bosses throughout the park by using those cards. I love that kind of thing. Physical interactivity with the game throughout the park. I do think it is super cool. I haven't had the chance to play it in a while, and I know a lot of people touched on potentially making some sort of video or vlog around that. We'll have to see if that's something we can put on our to-do list. It's a fun one, but at the same time, it's, it's super chilly out lately, you know? Still uh, in those winter months here. I guess February is a, is a winter month, right? And so we'll have to see if we can play a little bit more of that when it warms up, and when the crowds die down a little bit too, because it can get quite crowded, but I do like it. You know, it really depends what you're in the mood for. Something slower, Source of the Magic Kingdom can be nice, and you can also take it as you're going into those different parts of the park, right? If you're just riding rides at Magic Kingdom, you can always take it with you to wherever you might be going, which is nice. Who has better food? Is it Disney or Universal? That's a tough question. You wanna ask me that one? The, the reality is, for right now, I wanna say Disney, but I haven't tried as much food at Universal, and part of the reason also is Disney has that many more options, right? If you're looking for the number one best thing, when Disney has that many more options, statistically, they're gonna have that much higher of a probability of having a better food item. And if you consider the amount of items I've tried at each location, again, probability is far significantly, statistically higher for Disney over Universal. So I would have to say Disney is the choice for me on that one. 
Uh, a lot of the restaurants I named earlier, I want to say is better than anything I've had at Universal. I do like some of the food at Universal, but I'm not as blown away as some of those other items already listed at Disney. But I still have to try more at Universal, right? And in other locations too, to be able to tell you what the best food in the area is. So still a lot more research to do on that, but so far I want to say Disney. How accessible is Rise of the Resistance? So this is a question around accessibility for those who are differently abled. I believe that's still the correct terminology. Let me know if I'm wrong. But I believe a transfer would be required. You would have to transfer from your wheelchair, whatever else you might be using, to the ride, Rise of Resistance. However, I've also seen people going down a different path for Rise of the Resistance. So let me actually see if I can look that one up for you real quick here and come up with an official answer. But I'm not sure, maybe you'd need a transfer or maybe there's a special vehicle for it. I've never seen the special vehicle for it in the regular riding area. If I can find something online, I will let you know right here, right now or we'll just kind of leave it at that, we'll see. So it looks like the answer online here is yes. A transfer would be required from a wheelchair or an ECV into the Rise of the Resistance vehicle. So if that is something you're thinking about, that is the answer and I was able to just look that one up right here online. So I'm glad we got some information on that. Now we all know, so thanks for asking. But it's interesting. Again, I saw the wheelchairs going a different direction. I'm not sure why that was. Maybe that's somewhere that it's easier to transfer. Maybe there's a little bit more leeway than that regular queue because that regular queue can be like quite small in certain locations. So I'm not, again, 100% sure how that goes, but the transfer is required in short. Did you ever think about taking a day trip to Vero Beach DVC Resort? And that's one that's about an hour, I wanna say about an hour off property. I have a thought about it, I've heard about it, and I definitely love to try new things and check it out. And I know you mentioned here several cool points of it as well. It sounds like a sunken ship and that sort of thing. My kind of list of questions is over there. So super, super cool. Sounds like a great one. Definitely have to check that out one of these days. Again, I love variety adventures and trying new things and checking new things out. There's so much I still have to check her out, even in that immediate surrounding Disney area, restaurants, those free things I did in another video, those parks and those museums and that kind of thing too. So there's so much to see and so much to do. And thank you all for being a part of it with me as well. I know several of these comments also mentioned. Thank you for sharing the adventures and I'm so glad to be able to share them with you. And thank you all again for being a part of them with me. Really, really do enjoy being able to share different content with you, all kinds of fun stuff from eating the Chewies and the Tijuana Flats and all kinds of other places to the Disney and the Universal. So thanks for being a part of it. What is your favorite, number one favorite meal and restaurant at Disney World? Here it is. Here we go. If I had to pick one right now, you said, here we go. Right now, Dave, let's do it. It would be for me, the Yak and Yeti Dragon Roll Bowl. Love that Dragon Roll Bowl. Love Yak and Yeti in general. All kinds of great options. I feel like recently, sadly, the ahi tuna nachos fell for me because they kind of changed up the recipe. It's got a lot more lettuce now, and I think they took off a lot of that tuna and the, some of the spice, which I really, really loved. But that Dragon Roll Bowl right now has got to be the one. I love sushi. It's just like a deconstructed sushi bowl. It's a giant bowl. I love it. Super filling, super good stuff. If I had to pick one right now at Disney, it would be inside the Animal Kingdom at Yak and Yeti. It's that Dragon Roll Bowl. How about you? What's your favorite meal at Disney or wherever else? Let's say Universal or just in general. What's your favorite food item that you can get from somewhere that is not in your house or kitchen? Sometimes I forget you have a regular job as well. How do you balance your day job and YouTube and that sort of thing, content creation? What does a typical day look like? Well, I'm glad that I can make you forget all about it. And thank you again for being a part of it with me. So um, the answer to that question is it can be tricky and it really depends on the day. You'll note some days of the week I do stream on Twitch right now and I don't know if that's gonna change. I'm, again, I'm trying to assess, again, all my sort of variables, my inputs here, because I'm doing so many things from streaming to making videos to working, that kind of thing. But right now, Mondays and Wednesdays, I stream on Twitch at night. So what a typical day looks like is I'll wake up, try to wake up early, try to knock out some editing if I can, if I can even knock out a vlog, that'd be awesome. See if I can put that one together and kind of have that exporting, get my work done. If I have some opportunity, again, like lunch break, I can work a little bit on editing, that'd be great. So sometimes I will swing that. As soon as work is done, pretty much, again, it's back to work, which is the other job here, the YouTube job. And some days I'll go out and I'll video adventures, and some days I'll stay in and video adventures. And if, for example, if it's a stream day, a lot of the time I'll stay in. I'll video an adventure right here where I'm talking to you just like this Q&A, and then I'll go ahead and jump online and stream. So maybe later today, you'll see me streaming on Twitch. And if you're looking for that Twitch link, by the way, you'll see that in the link in the description below. So you'll see my uh, Twitch channel down there and you'll see all kinds of good stuff, links for different stuff. If you're looking for any of my camera setup, you'll see all that in the description below. But you can find a lot of those links in the description. That is what a typical day looks like. 
Let me know if that helps you, if that answers your question. It can be a lot to balance. Every free moment is packed. So normally you'd think, okay, most people go to work and they have their free time. Just think of taking all that free time, putting it together and turning it into another job or a business or that sort of thing. More or less, that's kind of how this one goes. You know, it's something that I love to do and be able to share these adventures with you. And so I continue to focus on it and continue to work on it and continue to grow it. And hopefully we'll continue to trend in that right direction. And again, so glad that you all enjoy these videos and thank you for being a part of it with me. But that's what the day looks like. Let me know if you have any other questions. Wa-bam, we done. Would you ever swim with the dolphins in Discovery Cove? I definitely would. That sounds super, super cool. There is so much cool stuff to do in the area. You know, there's the Lego stuff, and there's a whole bunch of SeaWorld stuff, too. You've got your, I want to say, I was going to say Bush Garden stuff like that, too, but that's still SeaWorld. There's a whole bunch of kinds, and that's just theme park stuff. What about dining? What about these parks? There is so much to do that I would love to check out. I would totally swim with dolphins. I don't think I would swim with sharks, but I would totally swim with dolphins. And the big thing there is just a question of cost and time and setting aside the time and setting aside the money to go do that sort of thing. But it's definitely, again, one of those things that I'd love to be able to do someday and share with you. And I love variety and sharing different types of adventures. So who knows? I may put that one high on the list one of these days. We'll have to see. I'd love to hear your thoughts as well. Is that one that you'd like to see? What are you most excited to see me do in the future? Let me know. I want to hear it. What do you like about Universal and Disney? That's a good question. I know a lot of people get questions around this too, right? There, you may have mixed audiences or you may have mixed friends where some friends love theme parks with you and they're like, oh yeah, cheering you on. And maybe you have a lot of friends who don't necessarily get it. And so let me clarify a little bit in terms of some of the things that I love about Universal and Disney. I do love all the attractions, being able to experience these rides. But another thing on that for me is the theming and see how the theming is kind of built in. And they take a lot of these movies that you love or a lot of these stories that you love and they build them into a world that you can go into. And that's a lot of the thing, kind of like video games for me, is you go into this world that you love and the story that you love and you become a part of it. And that's one of the biggest pieces for me about what I love about these theme parks. But also, continuing forward with that, of course, you got the attractions and the theming, just of the world around you. You've got the dining, some really, really great food at some of those theme parks, and just a variety of different fun things. Water parks, I do like water parks quite a bit, those water activities. So that's always a fun time for me too. So those are a couple things that I enjoy about the theme parks. And how about you? What are your favorite things about the theme parks? Which do you enjoy more? Furthermore, the question is asked, which do you enjoy more? If I had to pick one, there's a lot of variables there, right? If you're looking for more intense rides, maybe if you're looking for lower crowds, Universal could be your winner. If you're looking for those more calm rides, maybe more family-oriented rides, if you're looking for maybe more crowds, or if you're looking for, I feel like a lot of the time, more friendly, considerate cast members. Again, maybe just because of the training and the structure. It really depends. I think Universal cast members are doing a lot, try to board you on rides. Whereas if you're at Disney and you ask to be in row one, you can wait off to the side, that kind of thing. That's the sort of thing that you might get at Disney. And there's a, there's a lot of support and they go the extra mile in that sense. So if I had to pick one, I know that was part of the question here as well, I'd probably say Disney just for that reason. Again, it's that kind of friendliness and that consideration of everybody. The cast members create that environment where they're very considerate and they're helping you get what you want, what you need. And so everyone else around you is pretty considerate too. People are watching out for each other. Or you may find a little bit less of that if you go over to Universal. But both awesome times, both in general, people are very considerate. But it's kind of like that extra mile at Disney that I feel like that. If I had to pick one, it would be Disney. But I'm the sort of person who likes variety in life. I like doing new things, seeing different perspectives and different adventures. And that's where I'm at. And I hope you enjoy that as well. But I'd love to hear your thoughts. Are you all about the Disney all the time? Are you about those variety adventures or the foodie adventures or something else? Let me know. I had a question about my family's background. It is a tricky question, and, and a lot of Americans may resonate with this one as well. It is, it's a, it's a very tricky question to answer. I don't necessarily know or have all the information for you. I know there's a lot of stuff coming over from Europe and all that kind of thing in terms of my family's sort of history, but that's pretty much what I got for you in terms of the background. It's been, it's been American for a while, and so I definitely resonate with in terms of saying what is my background. You know, American is my first kind of answer there, and I, I really do resonate with always having been focused on and being a part of this country, and I'm very fortunate I feel at least to be a part of this country, but that is how I resonate my background. If you're looking about further, further back, I'm sure somewhere from Europe, they all came over here, a variety of different places over Europe, because that's kind of how America went, is just a bunch of people from a bunch of different places came together and we became Americans, so wha-bam. Where have you liked living the most so far? It's a tricky question. I've lived in Texas, I've lived in California, I've lived in Florida, I've lived all over the place. 
Where have I liked living the most so far? It's a tough question. There's a lot of considerations that go into mind for me. And you know what, as I'm saying this, <clears throat> as I'm saying this, I'm thinking more and more about different potential types of videos, and I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too. One big thing for me with California, why California is not at the top of my list, is just the, the pure cost of living. There's a lot of really nice things about California. And if money were not an issue, California would definitely be higher on that consideration list. But it's just so expensive between state taxes and between rent, the cost of renting and transportation, depending upon where you are. San Francisco, super expensive to get around too. So those are all the sorts of things that make California kind of rank on the lower side if I am considering it. And this is another thing I was making, a, thinking about making a video about is just this kind of like, I'm a numbers guy, it's just like, you know, expenses living in different areas or, you know, savings and, you know, my goals and that, that kind of thing. If that's something you're interested in, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Is that something you're about? Something you don't want to hear about? Let me know. Maybe we can make one comment about that. It's like, oh, what do we think about that concept as a whole? And talk more about that. But that's something that I think about a lot. And that's just, that's why California for me kind of falls to the bottom of that list. It's just the cost doesn't make up for you know, the beauty and all the other benefits you get. You do get great weather, great food, great people, all kinds of stuff, but just the costs are kind of crazy. And the crowds a lot of the time can be crazy too. So to my top two places so far, if I had to pick top two states, would be Texas and Florida. And there's a lot of benefits and there's a lot of unique benefits to both. So Florida's got some really nice beaches that I really like. Of course, Florida has the theme parks as well, which are awesome. And there's a lot of other nice perks to Florida as well. Again, being able to be closer to family and that sort of thing is really nice too. Over on the Texas side, I think Texas wins it when it comes to food. I think Texas generally dominates the food sector. I know in my foodie video, a lot of people talked about how they've had some even better food in Texas. And I'm not surprised because some of the best food I've had is in Texas. Texas wins that one for me. And then I feel like Texas a lot of the time, again, has lower crowds, less volume of people. And again, I'm sure Florida gets a lot of that because of the theme parks. But I feel like, again, it's nice and quiet and I kind of like that sort of nice quiet feel. So Texas got that going for me too. If I had to pick one, I, I, I slightly do lean in the Texas direction, but I like them both. And for me, they are far superior to a lot of the other places that I live. Another beautiful thing about Texas and Florida is no state income tax. It's another kind of fun thing there. There's only seven states in the US that have that. Again, is that something you wanna hear more about? It's like state income, places to live based on cost. But that's another thing is, is no state income tax. So, well, bam, another perk, both of those places. Those are the top two. And next question. How do you like Florida? And what do you think overall of Orlando? What are your favorite things about Orlando? Well, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I do like Florida. There's a lot of nice things about Florida. Again, it's that lower cost of living, that kind of thing. Also, the food and the weather are great. But if I had to pick a top thing, what do you think it would be? You may have guessed it. It's the accessibility to all kinds of fun theme parks and adventures to be able to share with you. I like being able to go out and do a variety of different things, try a variety of food places. When I found, I wanna say, when I found Tijuana Flats and I tried that food, I was shocked by how amazing that was. I was like, yes, I found my Tex-Mex. And Chewy's amazing too, and I was super pumped to find there was Chewy's here too. I'm still missing my Torchies and my Whataburger, but you know what? We're off to a great start in terms of food places. And of course you've got those theme parks as well, which is awesome. So a lot of really nice things about Florida. Those are a couple things I really like about it. Accessibility to so many different things is definitely a perk of this area. What Disney character do you most relate to and is your favorite? Well, let me answer that. And that's a good question. I like how you've worded that because there's two different answers there. I most relate to, I feel like for me it's probably Goofy. I mean, do you not see that? Like, come on, come, come on, right? Come on. I like to be silly and do weird stuff and tell jokes and that kind of thing. And so I feel like Goofy is a good, I kind of resonate with him in that sense. And which one is my favorite? And I kind of tie the favorite into kind of who do I aspire to most as a Disney character? And for me, it's Figment. You may say, what? Figment's not someone to aspire to be. But in a sense, again, that freedom of imagination and of thinking and that creativity, that's something I'm always... I feel like there's so much value in being able to imagine a reality and you know, believe and trust in being capable of doing something. Because if you believe and trust you can do something, you can do it if you set your mind to it. So that imagination that Figment stands for is why he's my favorite and someone I kind of, in a sense, aspire to be from that particular perspective. Which resort and attraction are your favorite at Disney? If I'm reading that correctly, resort and attraction, okay. 
Two very different questions there. If I had to pick a resort, it is a little bit tricky, but you know I like that kind of beachy water vibe. So for me, it probably is the Polynesian. Being able to take time at the Polynesian, kick back on that beach, always so, so nice. But there's gotta be several honorable mentions here. You know the Animal Kingdom Lodge, that animal watching is awesome. You know I love the Beach Club too, is another great one. Port Orleans, the French Quarter, because you know they've got that boat that comes up to it, but also that food. I love the po' boys and that kind of thing in that dining area. So there's a couple of honorable mentions, but if I had to pick one, it's the Polly. And favorite attraction. On the other hand, well, this is a tough question. Are we including Star Wars Rise of the Resistance? Because if we are, right now that's number one. However, if you don't count that, you only want something that you can actually get in line for and wait for and don't have to wake up at some crazy hour to go on. For me, it's Toy Story Mania. You know I'm a gamer at heart. I love me some video games and I feel like that one just brings out that energy. You really feel immersed in the world of Toy Story. I love Toy Story. Try to beat your high score every time. So much fun. Toy Story Mania for me has to be my number one attraction at Disney. How about you? What is your favorite attraction? And what do you think of Toy Story Mania? Are you a fan as well? What's the best show at Disney and at Universal? Well, it depends what you qualify as a show. If you're including those nighttime spectaculars, it's most of the time it's always gonna be those. So for me, the most amazing show right now at Disney World in terms of a nighttime spectacular, I think I might get a lot of a hard time from some people on this one, but I personally love the Star Wars one on the Chinese theater at Hollywood Studios. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, what, it's not, it's not about Happily Ever After at Magic Kingdom for you? And I love that show, don't get me wrong. But I, I also love, again, I'm kind of into the video games and that kind of thing, that kind of fantasy world. So that being immersed in that Star Wars universe in that show at Hollywood Studios, for me, just from a story perspective, is, is amazing. I really like that. Again, the Star Wars stories, the Marvel stories are some of my favorite. Although I do love the Disney, classic Disney stuff too, like your Happily Ever Afters. And I love Moana is a great one. Another one of my favorite animated movies lately. But again, St Star Wars. Star Wars is Star Wars, you know? So that's why Hollywood Studios, Nighttime Spectacular, Star Wars is probably my number one favorite. And it's probably closely followed by Happily Ever After. I also obviously love the other nighttime show at Hollywood Studios as well. They got some great art of animation, the one that comes before uh, Star Wars one. So they got some great ones over there. I also just love Hollywood Studios. Kind of resonate with the feel of it. I feel like, it's, maybe it's just me, but I feel like it's generally less crowded. So there's a couple thoughts on that. And at Universal, you wanna know what my favorite show is at Universal. Well, if I had to pick one for a nighttime spectacular, I wanna say it's the Cinematic Celebration. Now you can't always catch the Cinematic Celebration. You do have to check Universal's schedule and see when they're doing it. But over at Universal Studios Florida, not at Islands of Adventure, they have Hogwarts projections over there, but I feel like the cinematic celebration is even better because it's a longer show. There's more different stories going into it. I feel like there's more, sometimes there's more fireworks that get shot off. You know, I really love New Year's and seeing the cinematic celebration for New Year's was super, super cool. Some nights they'll do it. It's a nighttime spectacular. It's at that park. It's the number one at that park. Well, bam there you go. Break down how you transition to the Florida lifestyle. I feel like that's a tough one to do. And if you have any more specific questions on this, feel free to let me know. But to transition to the Florida lifestyle, you have to obviously figure out where your amenities are, right? So a lot of the time when I'm looking for something, let's say I wanna find some local food in the area. I type in food, I look at a map, zoom in, zoom out, and then I say, you know what? There's different functions on here. I'm actually feeling like Mexican food or I'm feeling like Chinese food. I can put on those filters, say Chinese food. And now I'm seeing less places. Now I just got Chinese food. If I see a familiar name, I'm like, oh, I love that place, like Payway or like uh, Chewy's, you know, I'm going there. And then I'll try new places, generally based on their reviews as well. If they've got great reviews, or if a lot of you are telling me it's somewhere I gotta check out, a lot of the times, that's gonna be next on my list for food places to check out. That's kind of how I go about adjusting to living in a new area, figuring out what's going on around me. Let me know if that answers your question, or if you were looking for something else here, you're looking for more logistics, like I get my driver's license, I get my you know apartment, like that sort of thing. But that's just kind of, for me, again, I feel like those are the things people have a harder time with, like where do I find good food and that kind of thing. And that's how I do it. I look at maps, I look at reviews, I look at what's around me, I think about what kind of food I want, and I just try new places. Have you ever done the Pirates Scavenger Hunt at the Magic Kingdom? The Pirates Scavenger Hunt, huh? I didn't even know that it existed until you told me. So thanks for letting me know. I've not done that one. I did touch on a couple of those other scavenger hunts that I've done, I've done the the biggest one that I remember was the pumpkin scavenger hunt at the French Quarter during the Halloween season. That was a lot of fun, but I'll have to look into this Pirates one as well. And that concludes all of our questions for today. Thank you so much 
for taking the time to ask me these questions. I really do appreciate your insights as well as your being a part of the adventures with me. I know I do variety of adventures from foodie stuff over to Disney stuff or Universal new places because I do love variety. You know, I like seeing new things and having different perspectives and, and getting to enjoy new experiences. And I hope you enjoy being a part of it with me and let me know what you think. Are you all about that Disney stuff? Do you like that variety stuff? Are you all about that food stuff? something else, and I'm continuing to try new stuff and see what works and see what kind of videos we like, what kind of videos we don't like, and just do new fun stuff for me that I can enjoy as well. So thank you so much for being a part of it with me. If you haven't already, for more fun adventures, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to stay informed. And if you like the video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Oh yes, thumbs up to let me know you liked it. And I'm sure you're going to hear all your comments below about all the other stuff I already asked you questions on. So thanks so much for being a part of it with me. And I'm looking forward to sharing more adventures with you real soon. Until next time, play on.